Good evening, 7.38, late again, sorry about that. School committee for August 26th, uh, 2013. It's our last official summer meeting before we get back to meetings during the school year. Um, and we'll talk about that schedule of meetings a little bit later. Um, turning to the agenda, um, sorry. At your place are the revised minutes. Right. We'll take up minutes first. There were some late comments that went around. Um, my apologies uh, for those. Um, this wasn't the only late. It was just the latest. It's okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> take the I'll take the hit. Uh, so we have regular session of August twelfth, twenty thirteen. Can I have a motion to approve, please? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Questions? Comments? As Dot indicated, the revised version is at your places. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Communications. Uh, you all received in your packet a communication that Andy asked be included. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we're not going to discuss that this evening, but we can talk about it at another time when it's more appropriate um, when we're addressing um, potential commemorations of, of uh, the baseball field and perhaps other fields. Um, we are going to talk about one commemoration this evening for a scoreboard um, because timing is necessary in terms of ordering, um, but we'll take that up a little bit later. Um, also with communications, we have a new assistant principal with us for the middle school. Derek, our new principal at the, at the middle school, is here to introduce her. Go ahead, Derek, if you, you want to come up here for the folks at home. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to introduce Allison Janowitz, uh, assistant principal at Hingham Middle School. Allison is coming to us with experience in both the Chelsea and Pembroke School Districts. In Chelsea, she had a special education coordinator role as well as an assistant principal role at the middle school level. And in Pembroke, she was an assistant principal at two different elementary schools. And we are very excited to have her on board. Uh, she was head and shoulders above every other candidate that we met with. Uh, in fact, after she finished her interview, I was encouraged by committee members to go follow her to the parking lot and ask her to take the job on the spot. We resisted, but in the end, we, we got just what we needed. So, Allison Janowitz, and ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, welcome. It's probably uh, not something you, you haven't had experience with, but this is probably the most, I would think, most challenging group of kids in terms of age. A lot of changes going on, a lot of transitions, but uh, it's a great group. We have a great team set up in the middle school, and you're, and you're uh, a welcome addition to that. So thank you, and good luck. And in your honor, we're building a new school for you. There you go. <laughs> Any other? Uh... Yes, uh, I did just want to mention something that uh, some of you, as residents anyway, perhaps got um, a phone call about today. The uh, Board of Health has um, changed the alert status. Um, to moderate risk for triple E and for West Nile virus. Um, and the, um, they also will be doing spraying actually tonight. Mm -hmm. is the 27th at two in the morning. It is the 27th, so from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. tomorrow they'll be spraying. Um, we have also been asked to consider separate spraying of the fields. We'll work toward that um, as quickly as we can. It's a different process for, for the fields. Um, and um, so this notice uh, has been posted in most places. And um, shortly after I received the notice by email, there was um, a, a reverse 911 alert to, uh, to residents. So just be aware um, tonight, 2 to 6 AM, and then we will let you know the status of the uh, field. Yeah, if, 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 if you subscribe to the police alert, it went out in the email this afternoon mm -hmm. also. And I know that. Um, uh, at least one youth sports program has uh, um, decided to end its practices at 7 p.m. as a result, um, effective this evening, um, and I'm sure others will follow suit um, as well. So, and as we noted with uh, our situation this year, because the uh, the high school fields are largely uh, compromised in terms of use, um, there is uh, 
minimal um, exposure there, but nevertheless, we'll move forward. Uh, and we really don't have any fields anymore at the middle school that could be used tonight. And of course, the elementary schools will not have uh, evening activities. But um, we have been asked to uh, consider the separate process for spraying at the schools, and we will do that. Correct. Okay. Didn't we spray last year? We did. Yeah, yeah we I thought did, I thought I remembered. Preempt, but the town did, right. But we did. At the right. School. Right. Okay. Um, any questions and comments from the audience on anything on the agenda, not on the agenda? No. Not at the moment? Okay, great. We'll go on to new business. And um, if there's no objection, I want to move something out of order, uh, just because we have folks who have come here tonight to make a presentation to us, and I don't want to make them sit through a number of things we have to discuss. So um, it's actually something that came up under the 48-hour notice. Um, it has to do with um, um, a new uh, outdoor platform stage that's being uh, has been designed and being constructed um, at Foster School, and we welcome Dr. Debbie Steller and guests with her, and she can introduce and maybe would like to come up and make a little presentation. There is a couple of photos uh, of what's being proposed circulating right now. It's currently on the on the uh, whatever you could, viewing platform, if you will, that the camera can grab it. So, Debbie, if you would. Uh, thank you. It's uh, a pleasure to spend some time with you all um, this evening. And I'd like to say thank you very much to um, Val Robin, who is one of our co presidents for the PTO, and also uh, Brian Kavanaugh, who is. Uh, her husband, as well as uh, <laughs> as well as uh, the architect, uh, who is uh, working with us on uh, our planning on creating uh, our outdoor campus, uh, what we call our outdoor campus at Foster. Um, our vision is, and I am ecstatic over this vision because it's a vision both for the um, staff and for our uh, Foster community that uh, the, our outdoor campus become a place that people want to be and will go to uh, and enjoy it as a community venue as well. And so that, that is our vision um, and that is where our discussions uh, take place. Um, do you want me just to? Please. Um, first of all, I'd like to, um, to just share with you that I think you all have received uh, some information already uh, from uh, Dr. Gallo about the um, replacement of uh, what had been historically a, um, a stage area and seating for children on one side of the playground that with the installation, thanks to PTO, of two additional pieces of equipment this summer and because a year ago um, the uh, stage that we had had become dangerous to remain and a lot of folks were splinters and really had begun to rock, so to speak, the pieces of wood, those were removed a year ago. And so in our um, planning, we wanted to just move our, um, our stage. And, and I guess I should begin by saying that Brian and I call it an amphitheater. Now, those of you who have the picture there, it's an elementary amphitheater. <laughs> I mean, really, it's not even a stage in the sense it's 12 by uh, 10 and it's 15 inches high. Um, but as you know, at the elementary school with tiny people, what we refer to as a stage or a, um, a platform or an amphitheater, we call it something a little bit differently. And so uh, in, uh, in our plans for that, we thought how wonderful that the children would be able to have a place that they could perform again. Mr. Decker, who is uh, one of our staff members on the committee, was just overjoyed because uh, just recently at a garage sale, he found a wonderful little karaoke. So that during recess, children will be able to dance as they used to do so and just have a wonderful time. So in all of this, um, I would share with you that I, uh, as the principal, am responsible um, for what takes place on our campus, inside and outside. And I would like to begin by saying I apologize for all of um, what has taken place in terms of uh, some misunderstandings about process. I thought. Um, that simply by what you just applied.
applied for because we had a licensed contractor, licensed um, architect that we just would apply for the um, building permit. And to be perfectly honest, you know, it didn't really dawn on me about the big picture of what took place. And so for that, I do apologize. And um, as we are ecstatic and enthusiastic in moving forward with what we plan to have in terms of opportunities for our children and for our community members, um, you can be rest assured that in addition to working with Paul Field as we move forward, which we have been working with him throughout the summer, that uh, before we uh, move forward on anything that might even look remotely like a building permit, <laughs> we will um, be also working with uh, John and Doc to make sure that all our procedures are in place. I'd also like to welcome uh, Patricia Monty, you know, um, who has been actively engaged in uh, in our, um, in our planning as well. Um, I would like to say that uh, when you have um, enthusiasm and excitement, and for those of you who joined us last November in our walk through our campus, I would encourage you um, either uh, if we do plan another walk through in November, if not, uh, to take a few moments and see what we look like uh, by late fall um, because the things that we already have in place um, we think are very inviting um, and appropriate for our children and also for the neighborhood. So um, I certainly welcome you know, any questions that you might have uh, in terms of uh, where we are um, at this particular time. Yeah, and just, just to give a little background, um, so th this came to my attention on Friday um, in the context of um, a, uh, an approval for a building permit application that was submitted by Glenn Johnson who owns South Shore Improvements. He's a contractor, he's a foster parent and has offered to donate his time and materials to construct this. Um, I, I knew about it, I knew about the idea of it probably prior to Friday because Glenn happens to be a personal friend of mine. Um, but I wasn't aware of the logistics of the permit issue until Friday. Um, uh, some have suggested that a building permit requires a vote of the school committee. Um, I've reviewed the statute and municipal regulations and I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, we're going to have to look at that a little bit more closely going forward because the school district pulls permits all the time to do any number of <coughs> things with respect to building small things, repairs, maintenance, um, whether it be electrical, <coughs> building, plumbing. plumbing, or otherwise. And those don't come before the school committee. Um, certainly uh, the PTO and other groups um, who offer to work with administration to donate their time, to donate their effort, um, um, you know, should be applauded in, in their efforts. Um, certainly, um, at times there could be perhaps a little bit better communication, not necessarily you, maybe Paul Field could communicate a little bit better in this instance. I don't know, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus. It is what it is. I think it's a great project. It's now before us and it appears that the building permit won't be issued unless we take an affirmative vote to approve it. So I propose that we take an affirmative vote to approve it tonight. We certainly can and address any questions or concerns that anyone may have. Um, it's a very straightforward issue, uh, essentially replacing something that existed previously, rotted away, had to be removed, and it's now being placed in a better place um, uh, outside. As you know, Foster is the only one of our schools that does not have space to, see, to, to fit all of its students. It's the only school. There is no place in the school or outside the school. Well, I suppose outside, everyone could you just stand in the field. Outside in the fall, right. and in the spring. But right. there, there is no one central uh, place where all the kids can fit, um, which is unfortunate. Um, and that's something maybe we'll have to look at in the future. But for now, we're talking about a very small 10 by 12, so, uh, right? 10 by 10 12? 10 by 12 and 15 inches high. Right. So, very small. It's an amphitheater, though, by the vision of. <laughs> It's, it's roughly the size of this floor area here. Yep, sure. Um, so that, that's kind of where we are on that. Um, th there's a little bit of confusion as to process. Um, I think this is something we need to address kind of on a global level 
with maybe folks over on the town side um, because this department operates autonomously and needs to be able to certainly adhere to all the rules, regulations, and laws that govern the issuance of permits and the requirements that go along with that. Um, but in terms of someone waiting for a school committee vote, we can't meet every time we need a building permit for something. It just doesn't make sense. And frankly, this body, although it technically is the owner of the school department property um, for legal purposes, um, is not the appropriate body to be sitting in judgment over whether a building permit for something like this gets issued or not. That's something that we have administrators right. to address. Um, and certainly, Dot Gallo is a CEO of this $42 million corporation, if you will, and John Ferris, who is the director of uh, business and support services, and our building principals are those that oversee these types of um, projects. So, and we certainly have Paul Field again, um, building and ground supervisors who works under John. Um, so perhaps in this instance, a little bit better communication, but beyond that, really not a big deal. Um, it's unfortunately become a big deal, and I would propose that we, that we uh, seek to approve, um, take an affirmative vote tonight to approve um, issuance of this building permit. Um, happy to let anyone ask a question or address a concern. Liza. Two um, so this location is um, down by the, the, the lower entrance? Yes, it is. The, mm -hmm. the kids in action kids used to go out to play around in the afternoon. That's um, what I remember it being. The, um, sometimes there's an exit there, but that's on the other side of the tree. <coughs> yeah. That one egress is yeah. there, yes. And what material is the platform um, being made The on? platform is actually going to be a, um, a composite, you know, rather than Plastic. wood. It's what was that? To Thank you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning terms that uh, it's it's what folk, a lot of folks make decks out of these days because they don't rot away. Yeah. But it's plastic. Plastic. It's plastic. Yeah. It's Recycled than, bottles. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Better. And we're using that so it won't rot. Yep. The last one. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? This is the only comment I have is that uh, it, it sounds like that the uh, there's not a substantial cost to the school department, right? None. No cost. It's not substantial. Yeah. So, uh, if there were the cost, there, were, there would be a discussion about that, yeah. obviously. So uh, it, for future, if we decide to go into this, you know, there may, if there needs to be a trigger, perhaps the trigger would be some dollar amount or something like that, which if yeah. there even needs to be that. Yeah, but, I, but that might be one facet to it, sir. So the, uh, I would applaud the people that have made this happen. And uh, you know, remember our tour last year is clearly something that has been useful in the past, and I'm sure will be well used in the future. So uh, I, I, I would, uh, if there's a motion on the floor, I would second it. Dad, did you want to say something? <laughs> well, I'm just hoping that as we move forward, we can resolve this issue. I mean, operationally, we have always functioned that things for needed repairs and small projects that were timely uh, were pulled by Paul or by the electrical contractor we hired. And therefore, things like roof repair, uh, boiler repair, um, uh, plumbing issues. Uh, there are an amazing number of things. People tend to think building project suggests a structure, and it isn't always a structure. There are all kinds of permits. And, and really, um, given particularly the open meeting law and all of the agendas 48 hours ahead and the um, packets that one would need and so on, just would tire hands tremendously. I mean, big projects obviously need to come to you. We actually have a policy on donations that uh, that allow principals to approve uh, fairly large projects. Um, and we need to look at those again. So I'm hoping that in the long term we can resolve this issue of what needs to uh, come to the school committee or not, simply so we can function in an sure. efficient way. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. I'll make a motion um, <coughs> that we uh, act favorably on a request for uh, the issuance of a building permit subject to uh, the building commissioner's approval um, uh, in connection with the uh, construction of a uh, 12 by 10 um, stage amphitheater at Foster School. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. One issue is yes. one of Could you come up here? Sure. Thank you. Um, just one issue because of the way you framed it. It is the building structure. However, um, 
Paul Fields is in here, but one of his ideas or he came up with with the, all the high school seating from the leftover bleachers, we've now got a welder who's a parent being involved and we're going to have the little bleacher seats set around and that's part of the permit and was, you know, there's plans on that as well. So it's going to be attached to the platform? No, I, I can't speak to the ground. <laughs> ground. It's going to be planted in the ground. Uh, I can show you the picture. It's like putting benches someplace. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just so everybody knows what we're doing. You know what? I would, I would, I would amend the motion by adding the language and 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 seating associated therewith. Okay. Is that fine. good? It's fine. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and I just have one follow-up question. Sure. Um, just so that we can move forward, we're hoping to have this done before school starts. Um, well, M Mr. Johnson is busy with my bathroom. Right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after hours, he's coming after five o'clock. When my I'm husband not is done, no, I'm not either. When my <laughs> husband is done with his work day too, and they're going to go out and yeah. try and work on this each evening sure. this week. Sure. Um, so my question is, for the sake of moving this forward, is there anything we need to do here tonight? so that tomorrow morning this can I, move, this I can will, happen. I, first thing in the morning, I'll let my Clancy know that okay. we affirmatively voted to approve this, and I think that's what he's waiting for. Okay, thank you. We would just recommend they spray off before they go out yes. after dusk. No yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for coming in. We'll go back to the agenda. Um, administrator goals, a review of uh, the status of the goals adopted for the school year that ended last June. Yeah, there's a rather lengthy memo there uh, that good. explains all of this. Part of the um, administrator um, evaluation process, or has been, as we move forward, um, the process will be a bit different for next year. and. Uh, and thereafter, but this is a this is a summary. You remember that we did do smart goals this year and asked mm -hmm. the administrator to do smart goals, which included uh, benchmarks, the steps along the way, and then how progress would be measured and so on. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, that would be a hefty packet. So what you have there is a summary of of the final rating of the goals, and a packet that has samples of some of the written feedback that uh, principals and directors gave just so you can have a sense of the kind of feedback so if anyone wanted to review any more of that we could make things uh, available but um, I think we had uh, good um, progress on uh, the majority of the goals I would say that there were a few of the goals that were related to very specific things about MCAS at this point we only have preliminary MCAS results they are embargoed so we weren't able to respond to those but when uh, either when we go to the various schools for our school committee meetings or um, when Ellen reports on the MCAS we can come back to those I think there were three administrators had very specific goals that right now I've listed as in progress and, uh, and we'll go from there so so it's simply FYI to give you a sense of where we are uh, given the many other things that were on our plate this year, I think um, credit goes to all of our administrators for move, moving forward in, in a very productive way um, in a challenging year. Yeah, it's terrific progress. Any, any particular questions on, on that? I know there are a number of reports attached to, to DOTS um, from various administrators. A lot of work. Thank you. Um, okay, proposed meeting dates for the coming year. We usually do this in September. No, actually, last no, year we're we late. did it in July. Oh. Actually, okay, yeah. so we're late. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. So I, I have the recommended dates there, and they're recommended for two reasons. One is they avoid a number of uh, holidays and such um, and, and meet some other um, targets that we have uh, toward the end of the year particularly but I would say that um, the end of the year is a little bit problematic because particularly May because we get into May and then the Memorial Day holiday and April is, is uh, challenging because there's a fixed date around which town, town meeting occurs and so um, what you have there is what I would recommend 
Uh, however, it's not going to fit everybody's schedule. We actually avoided having a Tuesday meeting this year because uh, um, we were able to work around the uh, Columbus Day holiday. Um, I know that Dennis forwarded us some dates that um, would be of concern to him. Um, so, and I also know that these are the regular meetings and as of November last year, the whole schedule went out the window anyway, so perhaps we shouldn't agonize too much over this for the first half of the year and come back to it. I don't know how you feel. It would be important also to know, do we want to start at 7.30 or, or not? That's something that we, uh, we can fix. Um, the schedule there uh, as well indicates which schools we would uh, do and the order in which we do them in our in our tour around so well right. considering we can't even start at 7 30 yeah. i would say we probably should keep the 7 30 time yeah. i mean i think that's mm -hmm. better for folks with families who want to try to eat dinner before and work and, yeah. i generally don't get to do that but that's right. my problem um i think 7 30 we should yeah i agree with. um now dennis i know you had issues with november 4th 18th December 2nd and January 6th. Yes, so, so, I, so I, have, uh, I have a happy uh, problem, which is that uh, my, uh, our kids in uh, Tajikistan are expecting their second uh, grandchild, or our second grandchild, not their grandchild. Uh, <laughs> so I know I'm going to be gone for, uh, to Vienna in November. And, and uh, as a, also, I have a client that I know I have a meeting scheduled for the, uh, the 5th of November. So uh, I would, the way it stands here now, not be able to attend November 4th, 18th, or 2nd. So I was wondering, uh, depending on if, it, if there's no other conflicts from, from the administration side or, or others here, I wouldn't want it to be changed for me and cause somebody else not to be able to attend. But either, uh, either or both moving the uh, November 4th meeting later in the week to the 6th, which is when I'm due to get back, uh, when I'm due to get back from uh, El Paso, Texas for a meeting, or the 7th, uh, which is a Wednesday or Thursday, and, and or the, uh, the meeting of December uh, 2nd, move that back to, say, the 5th, which is when I return. So uh, again, if, if it's a problem for people, then you know, clearly we would stick with the Monday dates. But uh, if one or both of those could be done, it would help me not to miss uh, nearly a month's worth of meetings. The November 6th and 7th is the mask conference. Yeah, and November 6th is also a building committee meeting as well. The, oh, the MASC con conference? Yeah, is well, anyone yeah, going to that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you, I mean, you certainly, you certainly can. You don't have to now. Okay. I'll just say, I mean, I know Mondays work well for me. I, I really don't know, but I tend to have things during the middle of the week. Okay. And so I'm concerned on saying that's fine now and then finding out that it's not good. I just don't know, Dennis. So, okay. I mean, I don't know. We, you know, we can try to find one of the dates, maybe, if you're Yeah. This I mean, for instance, October 21st is my wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. But that's probably my problem, you know. But it's not in Vienna, right? It's not. <laughs> But <laughs> which is a good reason I'm going. So in any case, Just so if that if that sorry. works out, that'd be great. And the other issue I have is uh, uh, in so, January. So do we have a consensus on trying to move one of them or not? I'm, I'm Would we? Okay. What about in December? Would we move the second to the ninth? Is that too long of a period of time to go from November 18th to December 9th? Does that help you, Dennis? Yeah, yeah I'm back. I'm, I'm back as of the. The, uh, so that would give us two Mondays, the 9th and the 16th, together. I mean, back to back Mondays. Save that. December, uh, moving this December 2nd to December 9th. Um, you know, those, those two back to back, since the 16th is the budget overview. The 16th year, we of what? We have a budget overview. Yeah, we haven't recall. discussed that yet, so nothing is scheduled on that. We no, but it's a school committee meeting. Right, but we wouldn't necessarily do a budget overview then, so oh. we have to talk about that. Okay. Because we didn't do it last year, and it worked out well, so we need to okay. talk about how we're going to approach budget this year. Um, 
So you would recommend that rather than the fifth, rather than just Dennis for the Mondays. Miss three meetings, three Mondays. Mm -hmm. Would we push the second, December second to December 9th? That way, we're still keeping it on a Monday, which seems okay. to work, I think, for most people. Mm -hmm. um, that I mean, that for me would work. I don't know how if it works for everybody else. That would work for me on that particular. One. Say would. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and okay. the, the only other issue I had is in January uh, for the sixth, I will be at a, a, a sales conference I'm doing with a client, uh, and I'm wondering if we would move. Perhaps I was going to say later that week, but in that case. We might want to just move to the th is the thir uh, 13th is that uh, Martin Luther King holiday the 13th? Uh, it's well, happening during the budget workshops as well. Yeah. So. That would typically be a budget <coughs> night, but again, we haven't planned that schedule. Martin Luther King is probably the 20th. It's the third Monday. Yeah. Okay. Always the third Monday. Yeah, so I'm just wondering where we at. It was going to be three weeks in it, which is probably why you skipped to the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, exactly. uh, and I remember. Uh, you know, with me. with uh, with the New Year's being where it, where it falls, I don't know if people are going to be staying or going or whatever. But uh, my guess is that there might be a number of people that are going to probably be gone through that weekend. Uh, you know, that they, they go away, especially if they don't have kids. Well, no, because school's starting on the second again, well, and they're getting we're getting the days off prior to um, mm -hmm. Christmas. But in any case, if that one, you know, if we we might want if we could consider moving that to the thirteenth, which would then you know, it still give us two weeks to the following meeting. So I don't know if that is a problem for anybody. What? So then it would be the 13th and the 20th. You know what? Can I make a suggestion? Seven. Why don't we go with the dates through December? We don't have Andy here. We okay. don't have Ed here. Right. And okay. Rather than start moving things too maybe much can, around. Maybe we can, you know. Next okay. meeting, you know, revisit. Look at this tentatively as looking okay, That's and fine. then we'll revisit. Yeah. So we would have, we would move the December 2nd meeting to the 9th, which would at least get you in. You wouldn't miss three meetings in a row. You'd mm -hmm. only miss two. And then let's talk it, to Andy and Ed to see yeah. what the January looks like as well. Right. And also, I would say that I'm pretty sure in each of the last two years, we've actually eliminated a Monday night January meeting because yeah. with the Which budget hearings true. in there, yeah. we didn't need, four. you know. Yeah. So. Okay. <clears throat> right, because a couple of years ago, we were meeting four. Right. And maybe Mondays in the, the, in the well, meantime, before we revisit that, we can think about what our whole budget would sure. be discussing that pretty soon anyway, what our budget schedule ought to be, yeah. right. and yes. take that into consideration. Great. Okay, so we'll come back to that one. Okay. And then, unfortunately, we have two people missing, but we really talked about a Saturday planning meeting, yeah. particularly um, to deal with the technology report that's coming up and, and other things that um, would help us set a stage for not only goals for the coming year, but in particular budget guidelines and such. Uh, we did that last year, and um, we are hoping that it will be possible to do it again are this year. Are you proposing a date? No. October 5th works for me. Well, we, can, we can, again, revisit it next meeting, but if that looks good for those who are here, that would be a good starting point. Yeah. Did we meet in September last year? Do it early in the morning. Yeah, I think we did it like September 15th, the but 15th. you know, October, October we, 5th. We, would we work. did it like at 8 to noon, or 8 to 11, or 8 to noon, I think. It was work out I mean, the 14th and the 21st of September do not work for me, so it, for me, it'd have to be, unless we did the 7th, which I doubt we'd do yeah, it that yeah. soon. The 5th is the only we'd Saturday morning that I'm yeah. available right now yeah. okay. throughout a two month period, so that's why I suggested it. Okay, well, let's uh, say that tentatively and check with the other two. Yeah. Okay. Because we still have some Good. time to. That's great. Thank you. All right. So that takes care of 5.10 yep. as well. We jumped ahead. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Exactly. We're nimble. The school committee is nimble. Do we have to actually vote this calendar? I think we do. Don't we usually well, we usually calendar? do, but since we're going to revisit it, we yeah. might want to wait and uh, yeah. approve let's, the whole thing. Let's wait. So we've discussed it. We've talked about moving December 2nd to the 9th, and we'll revisit it when everyone is back next right. time. Okay? Good, good. <clears throat> okay. Um, so items 
point four, point five, point six, and point seven are all home school application requests. Um, all of them have been recommended by uh, the administration. Um, they're in your packets. You've ha hopefully had an opportunity to mm -hmm. um, to review them. Um, with the uh, Charles decision, we're a little bit limited um, with our input. Um, there have been times in the past where we've been able to um, ask for some beefing up of curriculum if it was lacking. Um, I'll, I'll, many of these are repeat requests, and they all uh, seem appropriate, and they've been recommended by the administration. I think we should take votes independently to approve. Um, so if I could have a motion for Lavinia Clayton. Clayton. I'll make a motion that we approve the homeschooling for Lavinia Clayton for the 2013-2014 school year. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we've got Sawyer Hurley. I'll make another motion uh, for the approval of for the homeschooling of Sawyer Hurley 2013-2014 school year. Second. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next. Um, motion for uh, approval of the homeschooling for John Lindner for the 2013-14 school year. Second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Make a motion um, for approval of the homeschooling for Madison Quinlan, 2013-2014 school year. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Finally, a uh, motion uh, for the approval of homeschooling for Cosette Youngkin, 2013-14 school year. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> the Fields Project. So, a number of things we got to talk about. John has left at your place as an updated budget. Um, I can give you an update on some progress, the various facets of the construction. Um, there are three things in particular also at your places. You have a couple of renderings, scoreboard renderings um, that we need to look at. Um, we have uh, to discuss an issue relative to the um, sound system. Um, to service the multipurpose field, and we need to discuss um, additional services, engineering and testing services needed with respect to um, um, foundation work for the concession building. Um, and you know what, John? We didn't. Not everyone has this, right? No. No. You made some comments. Yeah, okay. we'll we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, that's my fault. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. First, let's give an update. Um, so I think I said last time that August would be a very heavy month for construction, and, and it certainly was, and continues to be. Um, uh, the, the the thing of particular focus right now is getting the park bar parking lot finished for Wednesday morning. It's not going to be quite <coughs> finished, but it's going to be finished such that we can park on it, which is necessary for convocation. Um, uh, but otherwise, it'll be completed uh, prior to school starting, um, certainly, uh, and hopefully by the end of this week. It's a day-by-day -day thing. Um, it's not really something that RAD is responsible for. There was uh, uh, a subcontractor responsible for the placement of the curbing didn't show up when they were supposed to show up. and have delayed it a few days, unfortunately. Um, but that is on schedule to be finished um, prior to school, and we will be able to use it Wednesday morning. Um, so let's see. Um, with respect to the multipurpose field, uh, curbing and subgrade work has been ongoing. Uh, drainage uh, infrastructure being installed and connected to the Union Street culvert. Um, athletic light foundations have been by. You see the foundations for the poles are actually there, and the poles will be erected, I believe, this week. Um, so you'll see those go up. Um, 
bleacher foundations are complete and bleacher installation has begun as of today, I believe. Um, and also the water supply connection for the um, concession building has been tapped. Um, if you recall, all the uh, utilities are going to be run within a certain uh, uh, proximity to where the concession building will be. Um, <coughs> talked about the parking lot already. Um, the baseball, field, the varsity baseball field uh, was brought to subgrade and drainage installation has been progressing. Um, the irrigation main line construction has been progressing. Um, power supply duct bank has been installed and we've been in discussions, I think we talked about last time, working with uh, HMLP. Um, it now looks like um, we're going to make our electrical connections to the existing poles in the easement and uh, HMLP plans, they had planned to install new poles. Rather than install new poles, we're going to put the service underground. Um, so that's not going to happen immediately, but that's going to happen. Um, and we're in discussions with them about what it's going to cost exactly and who's going to foot what portion of the bill. I think uh, initial discussions um, John, have had, uh, John has had with uh, the general manager of HMLP um, have centered around uh, perhaps billing the school department over a period of time so it wouldn't be a fields project uh, expense but rather something to benefit the whole campus really um, and it would be wonderful to get that easement underground I think so it would be a great uh, great opportunity to do that um, also scoreboard foundations have been installed um, we've installed them for the multi-purpose field as well as the baseball and softball fields knowing that we need to put those scoreboards there and because we won't be using them for some time we'll certainly be able to um, get the funds to pay for those scoreboards for the softball and baseball field either through donations or through contingent contingency uh, money that's that's left um, so we'll deal with that when the time comes but it was important to get the foundations in now because it's less costly to do it now than it would be to um, get somebody to come back out later on um, so let's and, see. And the power, the power as well. Yes. To this. Yes. <clears throat> um, with respect to um, items that are that are planned for September, um, as I said, the parking lot will be completed right right around the beginning, <coughs> uh, if not before. Uh, subgrade preparation of the multi-purpose field. So when the bleachers are complete, then then uh, that can really uh, happen in earnest. Um, the subsurface drainage installation for the for the turf field, stone layer prep, carpet installation, all that's supposed to happen in September. Um, all the communications and AV conduit installation, site lighting, walkway subgrade prep and installation, and game field perimeter fencing. So there's going to be a lot going on in September when the kids are back at school. Um, in our weekly meetings, we've talked about um, reinforcing every week. Um, all of the things that have to be in place with respect to security, with respect to um, safety, particularly with teachers back this week, with kids coming back next week, um, and uh, you know a lot of a lot of people on site uh, with an active construction site. So we've been reinforcing that every week. It's going to be reinforced every week going forward. Um, it's very important. So with respect to the concession building, um, the uh, Building permit process has taken longer than expected, but we're able to kind of bifurcate it, getting a foundation permit first. That's been issued, so foundation work um, is beginning, might have begun today, tomorrow. Yeah, they were on site today. Yeah. Right. Um, so Seaver Construction has um, mobilized on site. They have a trailer, they have uh, porta johns, um, and they're getting equipment ready to, to begin excavation for the concession building foundation. Um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, forecasted items for September for the concession is foundation work, excavation, uh, form work and placement, backfill, exterior masonry, um, beginning, uh, below slab utility work, slab prep and backfill, um, and, uh, mechanical installation. Um, and one of the things that we need to talk about, and John will have something to hand out to you, in connection with the foundation work, um, uh, has to do with um, a requirement in the building code, as well as the uh, um, construction documents, that um, 
that we have uh, an independent engineer uh, and testing service um, observe the foundation excavation um, and be able to sign off on the different stages of it, that the soils are a particular um, uh, compaction, um, that everything looks the way it's supposed to look. Um, not unlike we went through with the, with the middle school, um, but it's a requirement that it be independent. So RAD can't do it, um, and Seaver can't do it. Uh, it needs to be an independent. So we asked PAR Corporation, our project manager, um, uh, who did similar work for us at the middle school, uh, to give us a proposal uh, for those services, um, which is what just got handed out to you. This came together um, late last week. I think even came, did this come on Friday or Saturday? Friday, I think it came on Friday. Friday afternoon or, yeah. yeah. Tom Perry, who's been working around the clock on this job, he rented a house in the vineyard for vacation last week, and on Wednesday he still hadn't gone. Oh. So he was able to get away and take a couple days uh, and go and, and enjoy the vineyard this weekend in the, in the beautiful weather, which was good. But he had someone in his office deal with this, and, and I spoke to Tom today and was in contact with him over the weekend. And so this is something that is essentially necessary um, and makes the most sense for PAR to provide these services. Um, John and I talked about this. The, the pricing um, seems appropriate seems for the services um, being requested. Um, so typically this, this would come in the form of a change order um, that hasn't even been processed yet as a proposal, um, right? Or would it not be a change order because it's not part of RAD's contract? I think he's suggesting that it would be a change order to an existing. Yeah. You know, um, or it could be a separate contract entirely. I mean, it, you know, we, we can, we can handle probably it. just have it separate since it needs to be independent. So yeah, I would make it separate because we do have the project management up above. Right, in right. In your budgets, I've identified geotechnical services underneath the concession building. Right. Okay. Yeah, you know, and I, and I actually the last. So you've added into the budget already. Yeah, the yeah. last time I presented that budget, I had a figure of eight thousand, and right. I upped it to ten thousand. Right. To, you right. know, in, in light of this quote. Right. So there already was a number in there at eight thousand. It's increased to ten thousand just to cover this proposal, which we got Friday afternoon. Um, so I just have one question, uh, John. So <coughs> we're par is our um, project manager. Any yeah. conflict of interest with them being the independent um, observer? No, no I, I think it actually works well. Yeah. Um, you know, because they, they're working. I mean, that project manager essentially is myself or the town engineer on right. site all the time. So I think, you know, this is exactly what we want them to do to represent our interests right. and such. Okay. So, I mean, they've, they've been doing a great job, and I, you know, I know Tom's really been on top of a lot, but I just thought the question should be asked. Mm -hmm. And I think they've done, been doing a very good job at the middle school as well. Yeah. So, uh, Great. You know, they, we, we know what their I know. performance is like. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so the you. geotechnical services, you're saying, was in the original contract or was not in the original contract? It's, 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 not, it's not in um, RAD's contract. It's written in the... Or the, Seavers. It's, or it's Seavers. Seavers it's written in the specifications that the requirement is there and then it's to be supplied by owner. So... You've seen some of the contract documents, right? Mm -hmm. So I've gone through them. I haven't read every single page. I have paper everywhere, okay? Unfortunately, this is something I've already beaten Bill Seymour up about this, so it's no big surprise. It was something that should have been called out to us by Gail. They did not do that um, and said, oh, by, you know, in the, in, the, in the meetings we had to design the concession building, they could have, you know, could have said, oh, by the way, make sure you need to do this. It's in the specs. It's a requirement of the building code. That wasn't done. We're now being reminded of that, so we need to get these services secured. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a part of the bid that was from no. Seaver no. or from no. RAD? It was omitted. No. It was in the specifications to be supplied by owner. Okay, got it. Um, the owner. So um, if someone would like to make a motion, unless there's any further discussion, or we can certainly have that. Anyway. Well, exactly. And the motion would be to retain PAR to do this work, but yes. we don't really... But, and this would be the total price of which we've already, you're saying already had $8,000 in the, in the budget or not? I have no, I, basically last time I had, had
had attended a meeting and I got wind that we were going to be on the line for some geotechnical services. So I had put a line item into the budget for eight thousand dollars and reduced the contingency by that same amount. Okay. Okay. So not knowing who was going to provide those services at any given <coughs> time, you know, upon receiving this and in today's budget, I, I upped the figure to ten thousand um, dollars and made a similar offset to the contingency for the additional two thousand. So it, it wasn't in the budget, but now it's in the budget because it's being, yeah. it's come out of contingency. So are, are we looking to accept their proposal? Is that the... Uh, yes. So I... And retain them. So yeah. as retain them I, I, I move that we accept the proposal for geotechnical services from Par Corporation uh, in the amount of $9,680. Second. Any further discussion? Questions? Okay. Heard John, does he want us to actually say that we retain? Do you think he should put up, up to ten thousand dollars? I mean, because this is an estimate. Hopefully, it will be less, but in an amount not to exceed ten thousand. You know, in, in which case we come back to the committee for. I mean, hopefully, it'll be adequate. Um, and it'll be done within the, the time period. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm glad to do that. I just accept. We've already ha we have a standing policy to accept smaller change orders if this became, mm -hmm. you know. So I, we'd accept this proposal, and if there's a further change order, you know, that's two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars or thousand dollars, you know, I don't think we'd have to come back to the school committee. I'm a little, I'm more concerned about saying not to exceed ten thousand, and then it becomes ten thousand one hundred dollars, yeah, and we have fine. to come back. He's right. That's <laughs> fine. Okay. We'll leave it the way yeah. It is. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yep. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Um, John, could you go ahead? So that amount was the ninth? Yeah, 9, that's in there. 968. Okay, great, great. Um, could you grab the, the large size um, um, permit set that has the, the light poles? The big? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Could you? All right, so at your places, you've got a couple of renderings, scoreboard renderings in red. Oh, and just just um, before I get onto that, um, just to go back, just to see if there's anything I left out on the update. No, I think I covered it all. There's a lot going on. Things that are th things that are what Tom calls hot need need addressing at the scoreboard issue that we're talking about now. Um, obviously, the the. Uh, geotechnical services and what John is going to bring back and we're going to talk about the sound system in a couple of minutes. So scoreboard renderings you have in front of you. Um, this is the multi-purpose field scoreboard. Um, we uh, received a generous donation from Best Chevrolet to pay for the scoreboard. Um, the, the, the first rendering that says Hingham High School at the top was before we had uh, secured that donation. Um, that I think was just carried just to show what an ad or commemoration panel would look like at the top. That's typically where it goes. Um, I've since found out that you can have an ad panel at the top or at the bottom or both. The issue with um, having one on top and one on the bottom is that because of wind uh, ratings, it requires larger footings. So while they're finishing up footings, um, we need to make a decision on this right away. Um, Margaret liked, and maybe we can put this, we want to put this up there for the, uh, Margaret liked mm -hmm. having Hingham High School at the top. I think it's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. um, weren't really crazy about the commemoration at the top. It seemed to be more appropriate to be at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, do we want to have a Hingham High School panel at the top and the commemoration at the bottom if we're going to agree to adopt this commemoration or approve this commemoration? And this is just um, something basic that was worked out with the donor. Um, or do we just want the commemoration on the bottom or what? So I'm open to discussion about I like this. Margaret's suggestion. 
Hingham High School at the top and the commemoration at the bottom. Myself. The going question I would have is in order to put larger footings and posts or whatever is required, do we have an idea as to how much that might cost? Uh, I don't know. I know it's not a, a huge number, okay. but there is cost. Um, so it's just, you know, a bigger circumference, okay. deeper footing. I think it's a deeper footing. Um, and, and do we have any concern that uh, that Best Chevrolet would, would have, would not like their, was it, were, were they led to believe it would look like this? Or they, no. Or not? no, they, okay. Okay, they, they would be no concern. Okay. No, I, I would tend to agree from what I've heard that having this at the commemoration at the bottom would make more sense. One thing I would suggest is if this is what you're proposing, put this in the white and black similar to the, so that it balances it out. Mm. This kind of gets lost into the. Right. Yeah. It's a good board. idea. You're right. Yeah, good idea. Um, and um, this typeface. Then it's the same as the yeah. It should be the same. The team, so it should be consistent. Yeah. Well, it, the type, the font should be consistent, but then the white blends in. So if this is black on the white, it will de delineate from the scores themselves. Right. Yeah. Well, the scores are going to show up in amber, amber lights. Well, but the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the names of board, right. the important information you want. Yep. <laughs> sure. You're right. I think the generously donated looks too wordy. I would just have the best Chevrolet symbol in the middle on the bottom, because people will understand it's donated by best. You don't need the generally generously donated. When you're at Gillette Stadium and you see EMC, EMC or Putnam or Fidelity, you know that's been donated by them. Well, yeah. actually, it wasn't. It's not. That's not donated. We're not. We're not. Oh, we're not talking well, about wording different. tonight. We're yeah. talking about <laughs> well, panels, right? Well, well, but, but, but no, we need to order the panels. So, my, my only concern with that is without the without the donation language. <coughs> I suppose it could be open to suggestion that there's there's something being named, and that's not what we're seeking to do. What if we just say donated by instead of take out the generously to make and, it less and wordy? And maybe make it a lot smaller. The donated by unless they want it unless they want it yeah I, you know. I'm showing you this because this is what I I came up with that and showed it to the donor and he said looks great yeah. and he sent me the logo and that's kind of you know that was the gist of it well if we can shorten the words their yeah. logo can be different so they might be yeah, I think donated yeah. by would be would yeah. be sufficient yeah. to yeah. avoid yeah. that issue that you raised and yeah. accommodate yeah. Andy's yeah. concern. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you could with other things that we're having on. We're going to have, for lack of better words, commemorative plaques. We're going to hopefully have some sort of giving wall. We can put in there all the donations by best. You can keep it even simpler by just having the best there, and then on the donate on the donation wall or even a plaque underneath the scoreboard, you can have a little plaque there. This is, right. you know. You can lock two up when you show it to them yeah. for their final approval too. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that, that's a fair point, although everyone who sits at the field will see this. Not everyone may see that, what you're suggesting. Right. If it's in the concession, if it's near the concession, if it's someplace else, I'm not sure exactly where all that stuff will be. But, we have, but, but yeah. you have your disclaimer then. So when you, because you just referenced that you're worried that we named it after someone. It would be referenced in other spots that it's donated. I just think it you're getting too wordy. You get too much going on there. Best Chevrolet, which Jim, thank you. It's their symbol. That's what they want to be known by, is their symbol. I guess I guess you could run it by them, but I, I if it was me, I, I'd like to, you know, somewhat prominent and say donated by, but they, maybe they have a different view. Mm -hmm. But I I, I I think you know Annie's making an, an interesting point, but I, I wouldn't want to have it somewhere else. If they're donating the school board, I'm kind of locked in already and thinking it makes sense to put it on the school board like we we're talking about. That's, you know. but, but again, along those lines, clearly the Best Chevrolet logo is what they want people to focus on, so I would make the donated by a lot smaller. Sure. You know. Okay. And, and you know, even, you might even want, again, this goes to graphic design, which is not my log suit, but you might want to put the donated by at the, you know, on the online with the bottom part. Rather than make, trying to make it equal, so it just 
that's down with the bottom of the logo, so it'd be donated by in smaller type. Right. Yeah, right. so down yeah. here. Yeah, I understand. Oh, yeah. Same. Right. Plane. So it's at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah. So it's yeah. So it's level with the bottom. I got of the logo. Yeah. But I do like to hang them high on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we need to vote? I think we have consensus. Is that enough? I think we have cons we have consensus. Well, technically. As I recall, we have to formally accept their gift. So. Well, we have many gifts to accept, <laughs> so we should probably do that all together. Yeah. But, I mean, we took their, if, if we're given that we should be. Sure, we could do that. If you say anything in our policies, anything over $15,000, we're supposed to we'll take a formally vote. Yeah. accept. I had given that to uh, John maybe two meetings ago. Um, sure. I would entertain a motion to uh, officially accept a gift from Best Chevrolet in the amount of $35,000 toward payment of the cost for the multipurpose field scoreboard. And that names it into perpetuity? It's not naming it's anything. It's not naming anything. anything. It's going to have their sign on there forever? Uh, it's, it's, it's not really a license agreement. It's not <laughs> a, there's no expiration. It's we're buying a scoreboard with a panel, I would say, as long as that scoreboard is in existence it should have the panel on mm -hmm. it because they pay for it yep. if someone if, if, if it ever deteriorates needs to be replaced and someone else wants to pay for a new one then they could have a commemoration well, I suppose we'll have to talk about that yeah just because we're, there's been a lot of discussion over getting recurring <laughs> fees and I think down at Cohasset I think the is it a bank or something they were paying X dollars over X years, so it's a more of a recurring fee. Yeah, but I think that's an, more of an advertisement yeah. than an actual paying for the item. This, they're actually paying for the item. Right. So it's their scoreboard, and they want their name on it, um, which I think is appropriate. Um, I think in Cohasset, what you're talking about is, is, is more of a licensing fee. Sure. I think. I don't Just like know Gillette sure. Stadium isn't right. going to be Gillette Stadium necessarily in perpetuity. Sure. Those are naming rights. It's a license yeah, fee. This is not it's a renewed over a period of time. And yeah, I don't want to confuse this with naming at all because we're not naming this. There may be other opportunities to name features associated with this project that we could take up at, at future times. This is not one of those. Well, and maybe the other two scoreboards, if someone comes forward, maybe sure. we should consider saying this is for five years or four mm -hmm. years or something so that we do have the recurring income. But Best is a founding right. donor, so it is what it is. And I think it's a valid point what Andy's making, but it's hard to go back to them now and yeah. say, and they're good to our community. So no, I have no problem with that. It's a generic. I'm just saying good, that, you know, there was discussion. It's a good sponsor for a school, too, so mm -hmm. no controversy there. Right. So uh, I move that we accept a donation by Best Chevrolet of $35,000 to be commemorated on the scoreboard at the multipurpose field. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. The third item in particular that we needed to address is uh, this one first. So, do you? Yeah, maybe we can hand those out. Can you do that? Um, so, you remember you remember that during the. Um, During the meetings back in November and December and leading up to the beginning of the permitting process for this, when we talked about the sound system with the um, consultant, Kavanaugh, Tachi, Tochi. Tachi? Tachi. No, that was Jeff. I think it's Tochi. Yeah. Um, um, we always talked about the speakers being mounted on the light poles. Um, we talked about it in meetings here over in, in planning board um, that the reason why they were, they were going to be mounted at a particular height, they were going to be pointed downward, and that was part of the um, <coughs> design uh, that was going to um, reduce the spillage of the noise, if you will, to the neighbors. Um, and that was obviously a, an important facet of, of the design and why 
according to Rad, we're paying for probably the most expensive sound system ever installed in a, in a sports uh, facility. Um, part of the design and what you're looking at, if you look at visitor bleacher loudspeaker section detail, what you see is the visitor bleachers and you see poles behind the visitor bleachers. Those are not the light poles. Back. Flip over. Oh, yes. it's on the back. Dennis? Oh, sorry. Can you flip this over, please? No. It's on the back, yeah. So visitor bleacher loudspeaker section detail. Those are not the light poles. Those are approximately 30-foot poles that are to be mounted behind the visitor bleachers in addition to the 80-foot light poles. So on the visitor side, there would be no speakers on the light poles, but rather these poles behind the visitor bleachers. We never talked about this once. Kevin Atachi never brought it up in any meeting. Gail never brought it up in any meeting or any discussion. But here it is on the plans that were approved by the planning board. The planning board never raised a question about it. I brought this to Mary Savage Dunham's attention on Friday. Um, and the, the approach was, gee, we didn't realize this was going to mean two additional polls. We're, I, I, I get the sense and needed to talk to you folks to see if we were interested in adding two additional polls to this, um, particularly since we could mount these speakers on the light poles. Um, and actually, we've talked to RAD, and they've talked to the subcontractor installing the poles, and they can put the um, openings in the poles at no additional cost. Um, it would not, the, the, the speakers would not be exactly placed where the plans say they would, but according to Mary Savage Dunham, this would be a minor file change in the plans um, that we could submit and, and get approved theoretically fairly easily with the idea that I'm sure that folks would rather have fewer polls than more polls. Um, and if the sound is essentially um, consistent with what was approved um, and the quality isn't diminished, um, then, um, then that might be the way to go. In addition, if we remove those additional poles behind the visitor bleachers, I think they save us about $8,000. <coughs> so um, we finally got the number, I think it was Friday, Thursday or Friday, got the number from, from RAD getting the pricing on the um, sound system. I think it comes in at 85000 so it's 15000 under the 100000 that's being carried in the budget. So that's 15000 bonus, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And if we were to reduce this by another 8000 that would be even more savings. So I put this to you. Um, Where are the light poles on the visitor's side on the... They're, 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 they're what are the, what's the symbol? Farther out. Um, number four on the back side, probably. If you have the you AC see, if you look at it, number one, number four is the sound ones, right? They're at the 15 yard line. Just and the light yeah. poles are those yeah. things yeah. with they're all the, the little. 15 yard line, so if you. Right. The uh, triangular? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. With the five little triangular things? Yeah. yeah. This is just, it's very perplexing because <laughs> this was not, I don't think, anybody's understanding that there would be these two. And, and how high 30, are these 30 poles? Foot 30 foot yeah. poles. 30 foot poles. Look, I know we had The understanding was always that they were on the light poles. And we had a lot of meetings, and there's a lot of paper, and certainly we could have missed something, but not something like this. So when I found out there were additional poles, I, you know, my, my fault perhaps for not focusing on this page in the drawing, but I, I'm not even sure the planning board focused on this. The, the planning board reviewed this all with a fine tooth comb, and they yeah. obviously right. didn't see it as well. So it seems to me that we should go with the plan that we discussed publicly and that everybody seemed to be in agreement on. Right. So, so this, if we went with the way it was drawn in here, there would be, would be two 35 foot poles 30, behind, 30. 30, 30 excuse foot. me, 30 foot poles behind the bleachers. In addition to Look, the lights. That, so looking over from Union Street, you would see the bleachers that are up 15 feet or whatever it is. I think they're 20. 20, 20 feet. And then another 10 feet above that, you would see these two poles sticking up right. with speakers on. Right. As opposed to putting the speakers on the existing light poles, which is, I think, what we all thought was going to happen to begin with. So Certainly what we discussed. Right. Well, and the, the speakers on the home side are 
on the all pulse. at the higher. I mean, it kind of worries me too on the visitor side. They're going to get their ears blown out if they, because. Well, you you would think that they would design it in a way that would not well, bombard yeah, them with the sound. Well, they're much closer than <laughs> right. Sure. Um, yeah. And if it's, I mean, maybe there's some speakers off the press box. I think there on are on the home yeah. side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's smaller yeah. speakers on the press box around. Yeah, yeah. The, the idea was to have smaller speakers closer to where people could hear, right. Right. Yeah. as opposed to far away, so you're going to have to project it over. The, the right, and the larger ones on the poles. Right. Yeah, there's two yeah. large ones on the poles. Only on the, down to the field. on the home side. But what we're talking about is moving them to the larger poles on the visitor side, right. and and eliminating those two poles behind the visitor bleachers. So then would there be an extra cost for the type one speakers on the visitor side versus the I'm not sure. That's the I think those are the same aren't those the same poles that are intended to be mounted? Type three visitor bleacher loudspeakers. No, they're different than any of any of the other type of bleacher uh, speakers. You've got type two and type one on the home side. Yeah, they should be the same, the type one, I would think. Right, it's just if you're moving the two type three on the poles right behind the stands, oh, then you want to move them to the light post, would you move, then you switch it to a type one? Yeah, I think so, to yeah. make them yeah. the same. Right, yeah. right, but right. how would that impact your cost? I mean, not, can't be huge. Or a type two, whatever the, whatever the. Well, to be consistent with the size, other ones, yeah. right? The appropriate size to match the other poles. Right. Yeah, and and yeah, I, I don't think it would be. I don't know the number. I don't think it would be huge. But if we if we're doing what we're suggesting, we're now twenty three thousand under budget that we're carrying anyway. So we have twenty three thousand of room if we right. have to spend right. a little yeah. bit more to get the consistent yeah. speakers. And there's already and this would only be a change from type three to either type one or type two. Correct. No, I would ask or maybe it would stay at type three, depending on, you know, on its projection. Yeah. I think we'd, we'd want to look at the projection, because I thought the type ones were the big ones yeah. that would just focus down on the field, yeah. not necessarily for people. Right, exactly. So I'm not, I don't, I don't know. So that maybe there wouldn't need to be a change. Right, I'm thinking maybe it would be three provided, but, you yeah, know, and the volume would get there. Right, be, maybe the volume would, be would get too much to get on there. the visitor side on those. Light poles okay. with a one. The type one. I'm just yeah. looking we'll at the, li the light pole over here. It has type two speakers on it. Yeah. So, but, but either way, it's, it probably shouldn't be a huge. Yeah, we'll ask the. Yeah, we'll it probably ask would the not be the type Right. I think part of the system has to do with the governing of the speakers too, such that you can't turn them up so much. So you know, this one would just be governed. I I would think maybe it'd stay with the three, and it would be governed so that it goes to the enough volume to get to the the bleachers. What we'll do is we'll talk with the engineer and we'll confirm which is the appropriate size speaker to accomplish what we're seeking to accomplish. And Ray, what was uh, Mary's initial reaction to um, um, the wisdom of doing this? Um, I actually had spoken with Abby because Mary wasn't at the meeting on Friday. Um, Abby had relayed the issue and then Mary and I had an email exchange and she understood the issue, indicated that it, it seemed to make sense that if we're reducing then it would be a minor file change and would seem an appropriate change to make um, if that's the way we want it to go do we need to uh, have a vote on this I think we should we might as well we're changing numbers and anyone want to make that motion so I'll make a motion that on the sound system plan we eliminate the two visitor bleacher, what would we call them, loudspeaker poles, mm -hmm. um, because it it's really does not reflect what the community decided and voted on or understood that would be in place, and that the um, loudspeak appropriate loudspeakers be put on the existing light poles as we all understood it to be. Can I ask a quick question? Did the Sound engineers respond to this question of from a sound standpoint, are the speakers positioned there for a reason um, to maximize the sound capability for the spectators and everyone there, or was it they just up there? Because if we make this change, 
you know, did, did we ask them for their comments on making this change and how it would impact the we, sound? We didn't consult with the sound engineer specifically. Um, um, my understanding is that there's potential for lessening the quality of sound that would reach the visitors in the visitor bleachers, but the feeling might be that they're just the visitors. We need to coordinate with the <laughs> sound system vendor. No offense. <laughs> Make sure that it's still doing what is intended. <coughs> Right. I think that's really the that's major really point right. that we get the product, the quality right. of the product. Right, right. So I, you know, I agree we should eliminate the poles if we can. But if it's impacting the spacing and design of the sound system's quality, then um, well, I so think that's we, we talked earlier that we had that a little flexibility with um, since the price was under the hundred thousand, we would have some flexibility to play with type of quality of speaker <coughs> to achieve that I think right, we all want right. to achieve the same yeah. sound quality yeah. in, the, in, the, in the overall scheme of things and maybe this is what you were just alluding to Ray if we may if we sacrifice the quality of this of the sound going to the visitors and improve the quality of life for people on Union Street having to look at those poles sticking up there I think that'd be a good trade-off or at least it's an acceptable <laughs> trade-off <laughs> Yes, right, exactly. but Dennis, I also I don't want us to arbitrarily just if we <coughs> put them on the light poles and then that has the opposite effect. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I guess I would want to get their expert. Well, I think with the I think with the goal of sure. accomplishing what was yeah, intended. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. And I think that language can be added to the motion if that's okay. Because I couldn't repeat my motion, unfortunately. I have <coughs> eliminate two visitor bleacher loudspeaker poles and put appropriate quality loudspeakers be put on the light bulbs as previously agreed. To achieve the to intended. To achieve yeah. uh, the end equality of uh, sound. Sound, yeah. Sound. Intended sound quality. Intended sound quality. Yeah. 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 Is there a second? Is there a question? Just one question. Yeah. So will it also be subject to the planning board signing off or Mary signing off or somebody there? Uh, yes. Right, so, so it add should that to be the motion. Sub, sub, subject to planning board, uh, or uh, planning planning board approval. Approve, yeah. Okay. Pla planning board or staff approval, mm -hmm. as necessary. I'll, I'll like second that. the motion as amended. <laughs> Any further discussion? Got that. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. Um, did you want to just look at budget for a second and see where we are on this? Um, did, has this donation number changed? Yes, it has by about $3,000. We, we've received uh, some additional collections. Okay. okay. So the, do the donation has gone up. I, used to, I think last time it was 780 now it's 783 but the ten, uh, the the million ninety three number hasn't changed. No, and no, that needs to change. The million ninety three number has not changed. That needs to. I think that's gone up. But I think that has gone up too. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll check, on, we'll check, we'll on, check that. on that and get yeah. that updated next time. And just so you know, as I go through this, when the, the, the negative change orders, I'm not putting that back to contingency. I'm reducing the overall cost of the project. Okay. Right. And then the extra change orders that we have that are incurring additional <coughs> expense, I am in fact deducting from the contingency, placing them into the document, and then reducing the con con contingency by the same amount. Um, so. Change orders that are that have been we've just gotten a number of proposals kind of like at the end of the week a yes. number of them came in that John has thrown into they're all small numbers some reflect credits um, um, there hasn't really been a need to to meet and discuss them yet um, thought we'd wait until we got to a point where uh, we were ready to propose another change order and include a number of these things. Um, John, is a change in the um, the sound system in here? No. Okay. No. The sound system change is not in here. Good. Right. Um, so that that's potentially twenty three thousand plus any less any additional cost for okay. the speaker. Yeah. Also, what I have raised there there are a few bills that I have in a folder for you folks to approve. You yeah. know, and those are included in the budget in the expended amounts. Um, I actually forgot to bring the folder in, but pairs. Um, 
charges have gone up by about ninety six hundred dollars. I'll give you the specific. Numbers. Oh, the most recent billing for PAR. Yeah, okay. the most recent billing, and we got a billing from Gatehouse Media for advertising for two hundred fifty two dollars, and um, the. Eric Gatehouse Meteor. And, um, oh, and we, got, we we also received an additional bill from the peer reviewer, John Chessier, um, mm -hmm. in the amount of 970 some odd dollars. I mean, I'm just trying to get those folders. So okay. Good to see the gap coming down. Yes. You collected them out much smaller. Right. Okay, so John has invoices. Okay, so we've got, and Par Corp's bill is for August or, hold on. Okay, so we've got Chessia Consulting Services. He's the peer review engineer um, with respect to the drainage. These are, uh, this is a bill for seven, it's a bill for $765.50 for uh, work in July and August. Um, then we have PAR Corporation. Uh, we've got Project Management Services. For June 29th through July 26th, 2013, in the amount of $9,604.90. John, you read these against the. Uh, Tom's been giving yes. us schedules and, and, and lists of his times, and, and yep. so you're matching stuff up. Yes. Great. Yeah, I have two. Um, and then we have Gatehouse Media, as you mentioned, $252.45 for this was for the bids. Advertising. That's correct. Um, you want to make a motion to approve sure. these? Let me just right there. The list. Yep. Uh, I'll make a motion for us to authorize um, John Ferris to pay the following bills Chessia Consulting Services, LLC, $765.50, Gatehouse Media, $252.45 and Power Corporation, $9,604.90. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 John, you want, us, you want four signatures on these, like yeah, we do with the, building yep, committee? The, yeah. yeah, we can do that. Yep, that'd be great. Uh, John, so one question. So our contingency currently is at 194610 That's correct. Yep. <laughs> Any questions on the budget, on the money, on the finances? It's nice to see the gap coming down. And now that they're getting into the ground with a concession building by next month, we can start to maybe look at where we are in contingency. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we may have a you know another um, use of contingency for electrical service. Right. Right. That was about sixteen thousand. Five, I think, yeah. able to the electric what, company. What we're going to see, and this just came up last week too, um, is for the middle school project, there was an allowance carried for utility connection costs that, you know, for instance, uh, um, uh, whether it's HMLP or um, who's the gas? National Grid. National Grid, yeah. Um, <coughs> or the water service. Um, there was no such line item carried in the budget uh, for this project. There were, there's obviously the electrical infrastructure is included in RAD's contract, and then there's other electrical that's included in Seaver's contract. 
um, but the actual service fees, if you will, for connection to utilities in 16.5 is what you're talking to uh, HMLP? That's correct, for. yes. Um, so we realized just, I think Friday got confirmation from Gail that that was not carried. Um, so that's going to be a charge that we'll have to cover uh, out of the budget. So. But we can, we'll deal with that when we get to there. We're not there yet. We haven't even gotten the, have we gotten the bill from them yet? Have we gotten the, because the No, we just got a letter saying that we would be, you know, that before HMLP would pull in services that right. they would require that payment. So I'm not exactly sure when we would process that payment. Um, <clears throat> we don't need to approve it tonight, though. I, I think, uh, no, I think we'll have another meeting in time to approve that. All right. Um, anything else on the fields, John? I don't think so. Anything else? Um, I want to cover this before we yeah. Let's go let's, into it. Yeah, yeah, let's let's get rid of all the other stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. so Okay. You, you know, Ray, I have a question. Andy. So, we talk a lot about October 12th. So, what is just the logistics? Is the field? No, I, I know there's a complication with the with the stands mm -hmm. about being used. But on October 11th at midnight, are we going to have lights and turf and everything? What is just because so, there's a lot of talk out there. So I just want to make sure right. that we're all on the same page. Well, anyone out there shouldn't be talking about anything because they don't know. Well, <laughs> right. When you so have because, something like you know this what? going, everyone talks <coughs> about it. I know, but and you they know see what? the big uh, see the big topic <laughs> right. trucks go by because so. we because we're not sure yet. Right. So, uh, as of Friday, this is the latest uh, because uh, we I had a meeting with um, Mike Clancy and the building commissioner and um, Bruce Catman, the board of health administrator, um, and Abby Pearsall from Concom um, to talk about okay. Everyone knows what our target date is. We want to be able to use the field and the stands, theoretically, for October 12th. What will we need to be doing? And this is a question I've been asking since June. Um, uh, it has a lot to do with the bathrooms that won't be available because the concession building won't be done yet. Mike Clancy said he was going to have his, build his plumbing inspector call the plumbing board because they're the ones who issued the variance and the waiver for us uh, to ask them what would be involved. Um, they didn't feel comfortable approving anything without going to that higher authority. Um, I don't know what the result of that conversation was, if it indeed happened on Friday, um, so I need to follow up with him. Uh, at a minimum, they said, well, you'd, you'd likely need to supply portable um, facilities, and it wouldn't just be port johns but rather probably a trailer to be brought in. Um, that's something that's happened before. I actually talked to Margaret on site about this on Saturday when I happened to go by, and she said, yeah, we can do that, and here's where we can put it maybe. And so more to, more to discuss about that if, in fact, that's what we're, we're needing to do. Um, talk to um, Abby Pearsall a little bit, because a, a lot of what's associated with the approvals for this project has to do with conservation and in terms of them signing off on the land as it gets improved, if you will. Um, to the extent that we can start getting piecemeal approvals for things that get finished, like the parking lot, the drainage, all those things, um, they can they can get in there and 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 inspect and and uh, approve. I talked to Tom Perry about that, in fact, today, um, so that we're not coming up on October 12th and still don't have approvals on things. We start that process early um, and make sure that there's plenty of time for them to get on site and to approve things that are ready for for inspection when they're complete. Um, so the short answer is I don't know yet. It's still a little fluid. Um, it all has to do with whether RAD completes things on schedule. Um, you know, as you just saw with the, we talked about with the parking lot, the curbing guy didn't show up when he was supposed to show up. Uh, it's kind of like 
oh, the contractor will be there tomorrow, but he doesn't show up. What are you going to do? You know, you're kind of at the mercy of somebody. We don't have a contract with that sub. We have a contract with RAD. So I, I did point out to, to RAD that just make sure that whatever late fees you end up incurring to us, you get passed along to, you pass along to the sub who didn't show up on time. So that's their business. But, um, you know, they have obligations to us with respect to delivery of certain things at particular times. Um, Rob Delmonico has all along assured me that October 12th is a, is a very realistic makeable date for our use of the fields, provided that the authorities will allow that. So you talk about the parking lot. So if the parking lot's done next week, how long does it take? Like the school opens, are we going to be allowed to use it or not? Yes. Because even without the approval, or we're going to have the approval by then? No, we can use it. I think we can get somebody out there to inspect the parking lot. And we get, we're, they know we're going to use it Wednesday morning for convocation, and that's yeah. not an issue. Um, I think we can get, in terms of approving the drainage infrastructure, for instance, that went in there and all those other things, I think we can get you know, the engineers out there to sign off on that. So that is something that can be used. And Wednesday morning, there'll also be a detail. Okay. Yeah. So October 12th, because that's homecoming, as I recall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is a new community asset. Tremendous work has gone into this. Obviously, we want to use fields. What are we doing for, or what are we having for, like, a ribbon-cutting ceremony? Are you authorizing, like, community outreach to organize that just so we make sure we get? There's so many people over the years who have put time and effort into this. Yep. You know, I think it would be great. This is actually a good opportunity for the school committee to say thank you mm -hmm. to all the things. So have you formed a, are you directing the community outreach committee to, like, be in charge of the, the uh, ribbon cutting ceremonies and everything? Um, or what are your we, thoughts on that? We, because we, it, it shouldn't just be a high school event, you know. Oh, I agree. <laughs> you know. No, I, 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 I agree. I haven't, um, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. Well, let me well, rephrase. Well, we should because it takes a while. Let me rephrase. I've certainly thought about having something, um, not kind of put it into an action plan yet, um, but I agree that it should be a community event, whether it's something that we can do for homecoming or around that time. Or should um, we wait until the concession building is up well, and running? Well, there, and there's enough, but well, that'll be early December, so I don't know right. what. So it might be in the spring. If yeah. You have your big community Right. Event. See, the, the thing about homecoming is the hope to use it for homecoming is not just for a football game at 4 o'clock against Silver Lake. It's being able to use it for soccer games in the morning, for field yeah. hockey right. in the afternoon, and football. So it would be, you know, that, that would be a school but also a community event, but not necessarily a grand opening per se because the whole project won't be complete at that point. So there but has that's been... that's the focal point. So, I mean, yeah, if but you there has to do been something, some, you could easily have it on that day. We could, um, but it's also about homecoming that day. Um, I mean, it, it, it certainly could, could do something, but... Well, let me rephrase that again. Yeah. If homecoming was on the 12th, would our date to be open and still be the 12th? Or would we be... No, I think it's geared towards the homecoming. All right, so... Not so much to have a celebration about it, but to allow those games to happen right. on the well, field. That's a good idea, but, I mean, again, this is a community project driven by the school committee, so it's nice that homecoming happens to tie in that date, yeah. but we should still... I mean, we have... I mean, I was just thinking naturally to me, logically, with our committees, community outreach, this would be a good thing for them to, you know, take the ball and run with and just, you know, see what they come back with. So, no, I think community outreach sounds like a reasonable place to, to work on uh, coordinating it. Yeah. I have some concerns about planning it for October 12th. Yeah. You know, I'd hate to have be dedicating this and not be able to use the bleachers. And not have a mm -hmm. concession building that's half, you know, completed yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Full of I, mean, I don't want to have a trailer of porta johns right. and it's have the field still not, you know, have the dirt turned and not have it be ready. I think we should have right. a grand opening when. Okay. Well, and even, and even though we need complete. to plan something ahead, it's hard to plan ahead when we're not really sure if this is actually going to happen as we okay. hope it will. Well, then, as long as we don't have an informal cu ribbon cutting ceremony that day. Yeah, you know. I don't think we would do okay. that. Okay. Well, as long as, you know, I, I don't know what else is going on there, but... Nothing else is going on. Well, I don't know if Margaret had planned on something. So Margaret I, wouldn't be able to plan anything independently. Right. So that's... It um, might be our soft opening. But... <laughs> all right. And also, homecoming is a big day in the life sure. of kids in a school, and so to compromise what we could do about that... 
See, I think it would actually be a good thing because with all the clubs there, you have a lot of, you have probably two thirds, if not three quarters, of the student body there. Not even if they're not watching the game, they're going around through all the tables. This would be a good thing to try to bring back, you know, a lot of the people who worked on this in the past. And I, you know, I can think of a lot of names. You know, I mean, I think off the top of my head, David Calori, you know, Linda Hill, you know, those people there. Um, so they're a part of it to see it used for the first time. So even though we don't have everything finished, the, no offense, the concession stand bathroom is not the focal point of the of the project. No. It's the field mm -hmm. and you know the lights and stuff like that. So all right, I was just curious about no, the timetable. It's, it's yeah, I, I and I think, but I it's think it's an interesting idea. Nothing nothing has been planned at all. You know, I think a couple of us have started throwing around some ideas. You know. Some folks suggested maybe waiting to the spring when everything's ready for a grand opening. Nothing has been planned. It's not necessarily a bad idea to have community outreach take a look at it, um, but we're we're not quite there yet. Um, I I I'd, I'd like to I'd like to feel more comfortable at the fact that we're actually going to be able to use things on the twelfth and get a better sense. And I hope to have that sense like in the next week or so. Well, community outreach could still be the guys monitoring. Yeah, and I'll ready to I'll, go. I'll consider that, and yeah. we'll talk about it some more. So. And Ray, on your timeline, yeah. do you have a week before for the teams to practice on the field? I, I have no idea. I, well, I would I just no idea. keep that in mind because we don't want our athletes first day they're on the field as a homecoming game. <laughs> I, think I don't think they no, would The good news is they play on other turf fields, right. so it's yeah, not as if they it, don't have it's any like it's a foreign su surface. It, is their right. it would be nice. Yeah. No, it would be nice for them to have a chance to really feel comfortable. It's, it's, I think it's a great point. If it's possible, I think I'd, that would be terrific. You know, we'll, we'll see. You yeah. know, at this point, it's hard to tell. We're six weeks away about, and we don't know. So. What's the status of Rand's proposal on the synthetic turf? Excuse me? John. And you are, sir? Okay, you're out of order. I'm not going to recognize you. Excuse me. So, so just, Ray, in, in regard to this whole idea of a grand opening or whatever, again, we don't need to decide it tonight, uh, but, uh, you know, it may well be that since the whole complex with the baseball field growing in and all that kind of thing, yep. we might even want to think about the official grand opening being the first Friday night football game of next year, you know, where the whole community could uh, come out and that might be a long time to wait. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, yeah. you know, not that we can't do anything before that, but uh, I think we definitely need to talk about this yeah. some more when yeah. we have a better sure. idea of what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but it's a it's a fair point. Yeah. Um, Okay, just going back to the agenda, 5.9 is the fall coaching assignments you have Ray, in your packets. Ray, could I, could I? Yes, yes John, sorry. Before we move on, yes. I, 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 as, uh, on second thought, if, if the committee would like to act on an electrical item tonight, then do we, we have make sure they, from them? Huh? I do have a letter from them, what their proposal is for the amount. I was just thinking, you know, in terms of it, um, just I mean to put it put it out to them and, and make the payment to them because they're going to do it and then we don't have to delay. Not that there would be a delay, but they will have a couple of week time frame and we can give them plenty of time. If the committee so desires now, if not, that's fine too. <coughs> So this is just the electrical. This is to so put the, be a pull the electrical service and into it. Um, no, the other the other utilities are covered within the contract. Um, yeah. There was no allowance for this electrical sure. component. Okay. John, I think we could take this for information for the future. At the point in which they bill us, we can take it up then. This is just an estimate. Yeah, and well, it, they they do say that they they will require this payment before they commence work. That's why I was. Uh, well, are they doing this within the next two weeks? No, no. I just want to make sure there's plenty of time in the queue, that's all. Well, so maybe we can just, maybe, maybe we can mention to Paul that we're going to need to act on it, but we're going to need an actual bill, not just an estimate or a proposal. And so if he wants to time it with sure. one of our meetings so that we're... Yep. I'm not saying I would pay it now. I'm just, yeah. It's just a... Sure. If, if the item was approved, but yeah. Okay, fine. That's fine. We take the take I mean, information I, I, and we can do it later. I mean, 
Okay. Hingham Municipal Light it provides electrical service for the town, so to the extent we need electrical service for this, we probably don't have a choice. Right. There's <laughs> probably not a whole lot of negotiation to be done with respect to the price. Right. That being said, it's, I don't think it's something that we can say no to, but I'd probably feel more comfortable if we had an actual number rather than just an estimate for a proposal or something well, that doesn't need to be done at the moment. Are we going to get a better number than this estimate or is he is this his estimate and then he's <laughs> going to give us the bill well, after said the work is done? It says the charges may be it will will only be billed for what costs that were actually incurred. So this may be higher than what we actually get billed. Um, you know, in, in in reading through it and is there is there any any reason to believe that it won't be any couldn't be any higher than sixteen five? Um, me, that that certainly I well just if we call. took a vote now not to exceed sixteen five and we'd have to revisit it if it actually came in higher. We would right, but I mean at least it could be on the way. I, they they wanted you know they they have to organize a couple of weeks lead time, so I don't want to. Not that we'd run into the lead time if we did this next meeting. We would not. I don't. Well, let me ask the committee the this: did, did, Does the committee feel comfortable taking a vote to approve this in principle? With the amount up to up well the amount the amount the amount left open with John being able to make the call when we get the bill or I mean it's going to be what's going to be mm -hmm. I don't think there's any so, so ability the, to negotiate the, the idea here is to put these the the uh, utilities underground as opposed to having poles More poles. Above, no, right? not, well this is this, this is not just that this is this is actually for the service. <laughs> That's going to service. That's going to service our, our connection for the new field, the yeah. new concession building, all the connections that have that go to the existing poles. So we're going to tie into the existing poles. In order to do that, all right, and it's also going to provide the infrastructure to allow for either new poles if they choose to do that in the future <coughs> or underground. Okay. So was there nothing in the contract? No. So how were we going to get electrical power to well, this? The contractors were going to supply it, and um, we were left on our own to. This was another one that we were uh, <coughs> to the, the that we owner. were to provide owner to provide. Yes, but not specifically called out like that. <coughs> it was just just okay. kind of skipped. Like the geotechnical one. A little bit different. At least that was called out in the specs and required by code. This was not even specifically called out in any spec or con or contract it just wasn't addressed so whether we do it underground or by pole we have to pay for electrical service yeah either way this yeah. this applies either way whether yeah. it's a, it has nothing to do with the with trying to sink the line so the installation of the infrastructure for the field is in rad's contract the installation for the inst infrastructure for the concession building is in Seaver's contract but the actual cost to HMLP to connect to the service is this, and it's a no contract. As I, as I indicated for the middle school, we actually carried an allowance for that um, for all utilities. I think it was $75,000, I think, mm -hmm. and we were under that number for all of the utilities to connection fees, if you will, um, and that's what this is for the electrical service. <coughs> I think we should let John handle it. I think that would be fine, John. You're comfortable with that? Do you want to make a motion? Sure. Um, do we want not to exceed right. number or? Right. If you do that, we'll have to revisit it. Okay. Approximately 16. We'll okay, so why I'll make a motion um, that John continue discussions with Hingham Municipal <coughs> Lighting Plant uh, to provide the services described in this letter dated August 22nd um, for services in the approximate amount of 16500 and we'll give you the authority to negotiate on our behalf. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, that's great. All right. Now, coaching assignments. We're all done with the fields. Anything else on the fields for the moment? Coaching assignments you have in front of you. Um, these are just for our information, right, Don? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Looks like there's just one, one new. 
to do during the week. Which I lost it. One new person. Any questions on any of these positions? Why don't we returning? Um, 511 and 512 are two terrific field trips. Uh, Global Citizenship Program to Dublin and Belfast, Ireland uh, next February, and um, the uh, AFS Club to Japan uh, next April. We get notification because they're overnight trips. They look like wonderful trips. They do. <laughs> Have a lot of well-traveled uh, students between France and Italy and Spain and uh, China. China? And I know it's any questions on any of those? Hmm. Um, five thirteen to five seventeen are resignations. We thank them and wish them well. Five eighteen to five twenty-eight are eleven appointments, and um, a couple of us were. Um, fortunate enough to be present this morning at the new teacher orientation and welcomed um, about 37 or so new new teachers. Um, uh, Doc, just thank you to you and your staff. It was a, that was a great uh, yeah. opportunity and I think the teachers all felt very welcome. And I know it's a lot of extra work, but it, it's a really nice event. Mm -hmm. really, really nice. Kim did a terrific job yeah. with the food. She did. It was really, tremendous. really nice. Um, so then uh, back to item six, we have another 48-hour item, the greenhouse, John? Two. Two. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So in your, in your places or yes. in your packets, I can't remember which. Um, <clears throat> back on August 2nd, we went out for the uh, uh, bid for the installation of the greenhouse, which we previously purchased from Moody's. Um, and at that time, we, we, um, we, received, um, we received only one bid for the installation, and the, and the one bid that we got was, in fact, from Ludi's um, at a price of $31,254,000. Um, so, and, and previously, the structure that we purchased from Ludi's was $30,072. Um, we have a total of $82,000 in, um, in the greenhouse account in order to accomplish this project. And, you know, if we, if we um, have done a little bit of excavation and we've also done some uh, engineering of the piers or had a study done for compaction of the soils. Um, and with that compaction report, Ludis will, in fact, design the piers that this structure will go on as well, you know, in, in consideration of uh, we, along with this award. So basically, for about sixty-five, sixty-seven thousand dollars, we have the structure sort of ready to go up. We have the structure purchased. We have the installation um, piece of that. We have the design piece for the foundation done. So we have about seventeen or twenty thousand dollars still available in the account in order to get all the foundation work done, which basically is digging the holes for the piers and pouring the concrete. So I think that we can still accomplish the project within the budget, even though we only received the one bid. Um, why we only received one bid, probably there's not a lot of companies out there that will actually go through the, the risk of, of, of building a greenhouse. Um, the thing I like about this the most, for the most part, is that Ludi's <coughs> provided the kit. Ludi's will install the kit. And, you know, with the engineering report that we've provided to Ludi's, Ludi's will design the piers. So for the most part, Ludi will be the the the, the, the company that responsible is solely responsible for making sure that we have a you know a good uh, integrity in this structure, um, and I do believe that we have adequate funding in, in order to accomplish it. Um, so you know with the twenty thousand we'll do the foundation and and then it's um, heavy duty electrical which is about a five or six thousand dollar item. I think we will be able to handle it within this budget. So I would recommend that we award the. Um, the installation of the greenhouse kit to Ludi's in the amount of $31,254. John, what's the timeline? We'll have to readdress the timeline. So um, that's so the, the where we're at at this now, once we make this award, Ludi's was um, 
uh, we'll have to design those peers, okay. okay, in in what they have to do, and then we'll set a new timeline. We have to get a permit for Mike, uh, who has already told us that you know we'll right. have stamp plans. We have the stamp plans. Right. We'll have the stamp design for the drawing, so they shouldn't hold a permit up. So, given that you know whatever time it would take for the permit, and then for the installation, probably within 30 days after that. Our initial target date was to have this completed by the end of August. Um, and so October now, maybe. Um, yeah, I would think if we if we do this award, we'll have to manage around the kids just to get the foundation in because <coughs> it will be, you know, it's 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 in the courtyard. No. So uh, there's actually um, for some of the excavation, they brought in a really cool machine that. The wheels come in and it goes in and then they come out and it, it wow. it's a pretty good excavator. So, you know, we'll have to find the appropriate time to bring that piece of machine in again so that we can continue the foundation work. But, yeah, yeah I would hope that by October, okay. um, I'm, I'm, you know, before the winter for sure, and I do believe our kids will be using this structure by the end of uh, 14 for sure, which I think is very exciting. Good. Someone like to make a motion? Motion, we're making a motion to award the installation portion of the, the green, greenhouse project to Ludi in the amount of thirty-one thousand two hundred fifty-four dollars. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And one more. <coughs> yeah. So we went out for uh, the bid for rubbish removal, um, and we opened those bids on August nineteenth. There were five of those bids. Now, rubbish removal, the way we take that out to bid is we, we, we estimate the number of uh, dumpster pickups we have at each one of our schools, and the vendor just put down the price of how much it will cost to pick up each one of those dumpsters. And then we, we go through an effort after that of extending all those pricing out. So, so everybody's working off the same set of assumptions relative to the number of pickups that we have. So when we see these contract prices, this is for three years. The contract prices range from 108,371 to 213,901 for a three-year service of picking up the same number of dumpsters. So there's a, a wide range in this. Um, so, and, and I mentioned that it's it's based on the actual usage. So you know, over time, should we cut down our number of pickups that are required, we would actually save some money on this contract price. Um, the the winning the the lowest bidder was Allstate waste and they are also our current provider um, and I'm sure that they came in with the lowest bids because they already know the job so there was probably less a risk for them in order you know when they when they came up with the their numbers um, their service has been very very good and we like them as a vendor so um, you know with that I would recommend that we award the um, the rubbish removal uh, bid to all state for a period of three years um, and I don't think you have to mention money because the money's going to fluctuate. Okay. You know, the, the we're not sure it's going to come in at 108, 371. It may come in less. If it turns out that we generate more trash, it may come in more. But per dump or per pickup, it's there's an indication that this is the the lowest bidder. How did their price compare per pickup over their current rate? It's it's, it's they actually they're still in line. Yeah, not 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 too much more. Okay. Within budget, budget then. Yes, within budget. Yes, right. yes. Within no, I was budget. just curious if they increased it significantly or. No, they've been very good to us. Okay. I would move the uh, <coughs> award of the rubbish removal contract to all state waste for a three-year period, based upon their pickup. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, based upon the pickup rates they've quoted. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Eight. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Is that it for 48 hours? Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, subcommittee reports policy meet? We did meet. We had a very good meeting. We continue to, we're going to have a draft copy for you guys of our final version of the field usage policy and fee rates by uh, by Thanksgiving. 
and we're meeting again September 16th. And we're also, we have a lot of things going on because there's new initiatives, which Dr. Gallo gets to read all the time out there that we have to incorporate. And then also we are working with a townwide initiative on our recycling, recycling policy, which, um, you know, Hingham Public School System is a very good corporate citizen. Corporate citizen. We do a good job with it. I mean, we can always tweak it, but um, there are some new regulations which we have to see how we're going to implement. So it doesn't take up too much. But uh, our next meeting is Monday, September 16th at 8 a.m. Or 7, 8 a.m. Yeah. 8 a.m. <laughs> Not 7. But it's that first, it's that, it's that Monday. Right. It is the 16th yes. yeah. Yeah. meeting. So. And I think the only other group that maybe has been meeting is uh, salary negotiations, and we're going to talk about, we'll have an update in executive session this evening. Right. Um, Dot, superintendent's report. Um, you have uh, an enrollment, at least as of uh, Friday, and uh, it was handed out this evening. <coughs> and uh, we are continuing to uh, acquire new students. Uh, we've had a number of recent move-ins. We've also had a number of students who are uh, transferring back to the public schools, in some cases from um, private schools, in, in particular uh, schools like St. Paul's. So you s can see the numbers uh, where we are on the front side of the chart. Uh, there is, and perhaps we can put this uh, up on a viewer. <clears throat> there appears to be uh, a projected increase of 35 students at the elementary level. And on the reverse side of the chart, uh, an increase of 11 at the middle school and 21 at the high school, so the total would be 67. Uh, it's about 10 higher than uh, two weeks ago when uh, we reported out, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a pretty, uh, pretty good mm -hmm. estimate. You can see class sizes. Uh, the overall class size at the elementary is 22.1, and uh, you can see that in um, a couple of the buildings there are class sizes that are universally large across the grades. Uh, so um, we've got a fairly decent balance. Um, the, the greatest reason for the elementary increase is the kindergarten. Now, the last several years, we've had a small kindergarten count. Um, last September, we opened with 256 kindergartners, and this year, at this point, 297. So that's a significant increase. Uh, we had anticipated kindergarten enrollment was going down a bit and was level off. Uh, one year, of course, doesn't make a trend, but it is something <coughs> to watch. And uh, the uptick, net uptick in um, last year's kindergarten moving to this year's grade one is a net of 49 students, a bit less than last year, but still uh, a significant number. And so um, right, the, the figures speak for themselves on uh, that we will do a count next uh, Tuesday. Next week we'll get a count on uh, Tuesday and on Thursday because that's when kindergarten comes in and a first of and our official count for the month of September would be on Monday the night. So the next time we meet we should have a, a number that's a pretty real pretty real number. Okay. On the Dr. Keller, I always remember PRS being the smallest of our schools. And now it's PRS is P bigger than, than Foster. Yeah, PRS and Foster are schools that are were intentionally in terms of redistricting okay. smaller than the other two. And both of those have grown, and uh, in particular this year, the Plymouth River Kindergarten um, is up at four sections in the last couple of years. So, so some of that increase is because of the kindergarten. And we also have uh, the other buildings are all pretty much four uh, across the grades, or at least most of the grades. At Plymouth River, we have some fours, some threes, and one five, that very large class that's been moving through Plymouth River. 114 um, fifth graders. That would be my son's so, class. So that's the uh, uh, concern there. I think if you look at the first two years of the new school being open, uh, these numbers are 391 and 384. We do lose some students from uh, five to six um, each year, but um, those are pretty big numbers. And remembering that the count for the middle school or the projected enrollment, design enrollment was 1020. We anticipated we might be over that in the first uh, year or two. Well, and I remember looking at this, that just looking at the fifth grade a couple of years ago, I think it was in the 370s 
and then inched up to 380s, and it keeps growing. 390 is close to 400 now for move-ins or whatever. Um, and, and the next grade four is not far behind. So that's the enrollment and um, update on hiring and vacancies. We're at this point uh, two uh, positions <laughs> still open, but we have identified candidates for both of them. Uh, so I haven't yet met with those folks. Uh, in the one case, uh, of a psychologist chair position at South School. Um, I think that we're going to be able to get the person signed on board. Um, we are checking with the other community because the person is coming from somewhere else about whether or not um, we would need to accommodate their, um, whatever their contractual agreement is. Um, that's something usually um, the superintendents work out to do something that's fair on both sides. The other um, position is the tech specialist for the middle school. We do have a candidate. Um, that one, of course, isn't as urgent in the sense that um, there are not students involved in that. Uh, this is a person <coughs> coming from uh, the business world, as you know, for that position. We advertise both ways. We advertised for a tech specialist, a teacher member who would be a union member, uh, and we advertised in the business um, section of the globe as well for someone coming from the business world. Mm. And it looks as if we're going to do the business um, person and therefore it will be uh, an individual contract so that that's something we'll put together and pass by salary negotiations and the person would not be a member of the teachers union and, and I have uh, spoken with Alec Porter about that. So we're in good shape given how many openings we had I think we're fortunate to be uh, where we are. In addition to the 40 or so uh, new folks because we have three you mentioned 35 new contracts with three other people who are going to be with us from day one up until the uh, Christmas time. So um, we included them in some of the activities as well. Um, they're covering for maternity leaves, all three of them. Um, so um, John has some information. Do you want to go into the budget? Sure. Yeah. John has some information on the FY. 13 budget, and then uh, I'll make a few comments uh, on the books are finally ready on the FY 14 Great. budget. So why don't you start with FY 13? I just wanted I wanted to give you an update on the uh, FY 13 closeout of the budget. Um, at this point in time, the the auditors are still looking at the books, but by and large, most of the numbers are, are pretty much known. So I wouldn't expect the the numbers to change much. <laughs> Um, the the school budget was, was showing that we'll be returning uh, in excess of nine hundred ninety three thousand dollars to the town for the FY thirteen budget, um, and the variant the the, the um, large driver of this is special education. Special education accounts account for eight hundred thirty three thousand dollars of that variance. Um, the and then some capital monies that will be returning account for another seventy five thousand dollars worth of that variance. And um, then, then Votech and and uh, contributes an additional seven thousand dollars. So, um, a large portion of it has come back from special education. Um, I break down <coughs> some of the the other drivers from reg regular educational personal accounts. There's it's showing a positive variance or under budget really of one hundred and sixty four thousand dollars, largely the result of a positive hiring season. Um, some leaves of absence that occurred after the budget and um, and then also some post budget retirements and that variance has also been somewhat offset by the by not using athletic revolving funds to cover coaches stipends as we're preserving that um, to cover some of the um, time gap between raising the funds and, and have an adequate uh, funding to uh, pay bills the contracts and plant maintenance, that's showing a negative variance or over budget, an unfavorable variance of $79,000. <coughs> and that, it, it's important to understand that that's, a, that's regular um, contracts, so regular education plus plant maintenance contracts. So all the normal maintenance plant that would, maintenance <coughs> activities that would occur in the plant, um, in addition to any uh, regular education contracts. Um, and the large driver of that has to do with the deficit in food service, about $99,000 that's actually been charged to that account. Okay, so, you know, that's showing a negative of 79000 but food service is 99000 of that because that's the account that has holding the, um, 
the deficit for food service. Utilities and gasoline, um, we ended up with a negative variance or over budget uh, for those items of $7,455. I already mentioned the special ed. That's the big driver of the $133,000. Um, and vote tech for $7,200. VOTEC, we have two components of VOTEC, really. It's tuitions and it's also transportation. Um, we try to handle as much in transportation in-house as possible when we do it, uh, but we do have an allowance in there for transportation in the event that we have to transport, um, use contractors to transport kids to South Shore or Blue Hills or, or uh, uh, North Fork area or other schools they may go to. So this um, amount is, is largely due to not using transportation funds, somewhat offset by some additional special education charges related to some of the tuitions. And from the capital budget variance, I mean, I talked before, we had a significant item in the capital budget of $37,000 for window and, and door replacement at Foster, um, which has really been put on hold due because getting into the projects may maybe trigger some regulations that we're not really prepared to get into at this point. Um, then also on copiers, you know, over the years I've been sort of moving towards a direction of purchasing only those copiers that have low volume and used by administration and leasing those copiers that are actually used by teachers or very high volume with volume ones so that every three years we could sort of turn them over. So it, between those two items and then also some of the other projects like the gym floor came in a little less um, and uh, the um, and we didn't purchase some student desks so those those types of things actually contributed to that seventy five thousand dollar return of capital monies um, so as I said you know the auditors are in town they may suggest some additional journal entries I don't know whether any journal entries they suggest would be hitting the school or not but until it's completely closed you know we really can't say this is the exact number but typically shouldn't change much from that number, which is a very healthy um, return to the town. And, you know, all those projects were done. So, I mean, you know, the there's this has the encumbrance of the Plymouth River Shed has been re-roofed. Re um, the, you know, we have the sidewalks being repaired or have been repaired at the high school. We have um, air-cooled refrigeration going in at Foster, plus an encumbrance from Plymouth River. So all of those projects are still encompassed in all of this money. Yes, and, and it has got done last week, I think. At the yes, school. they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so the you know, a lot of that is just a regular operating budget that we have at the, you know, when we have a, a good <coughs> year, um, we can afford to do those types of projects. So, John, just a quick, quick question. Um, when you say that this is going back to the town, could you just elaborate a little for folks that might, might not understand what that means? Okay, so when when we close out a, a budget year, any any monies that are not spent or expended, they actually go back to the town and they go through a process where they get freed up. So it takes it takes they don't get freed up immediately, but probably right. by next year they will be freed up because they have to go back to, I think the DOR and they get certified as free cash for the town. So in subsequent budget years, you know this budget year coming up. The, you know the town could say hey well, we're going to have this free cash freeing up so they could actually put some free cash into the budget amounts that they so um, this stuff money doesn't allocate. necessarily get spent by the town but it might go into a, a savings like account yeah I, I, I that would be yeah it could end up going into the fund balance right um, but like I don't think it goes in fund balance fund immediately balance. Yeah. right it, okay. it will get freed up to there. free cash yeah. first and then it go, will right. go into fund okay. balance thank you um, Something I forgot to mention in communications, but it relates to the budget, is that um, I got a, an email from Betty Foley late this afternoon that um, the first formal forecast meeting of this year, which will be a, an open meeting um, for members of the school committee, for the advisory committee, selectmen, and personnel board, um, has been scheduled for September 17th, that's a Tuesday night at 8 p.m., uh, location to be announced. So that's a date to put on your calendar. Um, and that will be the first forecast looking ahead to the FY15 budget year. Thank you. Uh, and since personnel will be uh, there, I also had spoken 
Peter Ebb uh, earlier when it was a tentative day to see his availability, and he is able to be here that night as well. So I will let him know that. Thank you, John. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> With respect to the FY14 budget, the budget books are finally done. Um, and in the number of factors there, it wasn't just that we've been uh, very, very busy, although that certainly is the case. But remember, we were carrying an allowance for a number of the bargaining units that um, were open this year and had made a proposal to several of them, or to all of them actually, uh, of extending the contract for one more year to get back on a similar cycle. And, uh, and all but one of those groups did agree to do that. And when we got those agreements, we could then move those dollars from the allowance that we had in the budget back into the salary accounts. We have one union with whom we're still negotiating. That's a paraeducator unit, and so we're still carrying an allowance. So that was an unknown, and then the significant changes in personnel, trying to update those as, uh, as well. So the books are done, and I think value available for you to um, uh, take at the end of uh, at the end of this meeting. Yes. Yep. Um, any other comments we wanted to make on that? I think that we, you know, we have had a number of personnel savings, we believe, because of the turnover, although until we get everybody hired and on board, I can't tell you exactly what that is. But I know there was a question earlier about, you know, uh, were there things that we still were go going to be able to find that were not funded um, um, specifically uh, by item as part of the budget? And, and, uh, and, and yes, we think that there are, uh, there are uh, those. I can tell you on the uh, other side that, for example, um, the position that we did um, hope to budget and that was not funded for the custodial supervisor, that is not something that we've moved forward on at this point um, for a couple of reasons. One, there is a negotiating component to it. Another is that we haven't had time to look for such a person. Right. But so at most, that could only be funded for a piece of the year. So that's one. Uh, one thing, we have not yet moved forward on the position for uh, our office. That purely is a function of just not, we've, we've developed the job description and we've posted, but just trying to get down an interview we haven't done. So again, that's going to be a piece of a year. So, um, so and uh, uh, the third one that uh, we likely are not going to uh, uh, push further for is the uh, clerical support for the Title IX uh, audit because, quite honestly, we're having tremendous difficulty in getting responses back to the um, s plans that we send to them and we wait for response. And so it seems unlikely that we're going to need that um, that piece. So that's just a rough summary of where we, where we are. Great. Thank you. Any questions on um, Anything else, Doc? No. We need an executive session, so you want to make a motion? Okay. I'm going to make a motion to um, enter into executive session for strategies related to collective bargaining and for potential litigation. The committee <coughs> will um, return to open session to act as appropriate. We need a Roll call vote. So we we'll have a second. 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 Third. Yeah. Second. Yeah. So we, <laughs> yes, I will. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. Regular session is adjourned until completion of executive session, and then we'll come back into regular session to act as we need be as we need to this evening. Thank you. Back. Uh, just concluded an executive session. We have returned to open session um, to address <laughs> one item, and we have a vote to take, and then we'll be finished for the evening, I believe. Great. Um, I would like to, with respect to a vote that we took on August 12th, 2013, I would move that we rescind the vote the school committee took on August 12th, 2013. Uh, with respect to a value engineering choice uh, in connection with the supply and installation of artificial turf in connection with our high school fields project. I'll second that motion. Any question, comment, further discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's all we have. Uh, before we conclude, is there anything else we need to discuss? I take a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.